Brothers and sisters, good morning to you. Today we are reading Mark chapter 15. The darkest chapter. The deepest chapter. It's really hard to share on uh, this chapter with you. I cannot to talk too much, share too much. The title I should give, The Son of God Has Truly Died. That's the simple title I should give. Jesus has died. The Son of God died. Is it possible? He is God. He dies? Yes, man dies. But how about the Son of God? How come he died? How is it possible? Is it true? Is it real? That should be the focus. In Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asked his disciple, Who do you think I am? Before six months before his crucifixion. He was rejected. So he brought his um, disciple back to uh, Galilee to retreat to Galilee, Galilee, the north of Galilee. Peter said, you are Christ. And Jesus told him, you are Peter, the church shall Upon you should build the church. And the, the, the gates, the uh, hills will, shall not prevail over you. And at the end he said, The Son of Man shall, be, shall suffer, rejected, and delivered to the hand of the people. But he shall rise. Peter said to Jesus, Never, never should this happen. You are Christ. How can you die? And Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan. You do not care about the mind of God, but only the mind of a man. The Son of Man rejected, suffered, died, are all the will of God. These are all the will of God. Man can never accept this. Peter couldn't accept this fact. But this is the plan of God. This is the will of God. This is such a deep uh, topic. Even death is the will of God. That the Son of God will die is the will of God. And six months later, six months after that encounter episode in uh, Caesarea Philippi, now we are in Mark chapter 15, what we are reading today is fulfilling Jesus, his own prophecies, fulfilling the will of God. 
we should only have one focus. How Jesus walked on the redemption and death, the, the way of redemption and death. But if we say like this, But then we ignore, if we do that, we ignore the encouragement that uh, this chapter is written for the Marx community, for the Christians at, in 70 AD. How, they encur how it actually encouraged them. When they, read, when they read this chapter, they were encouraged. <coughs> they were in hardship, they were in uh, persecution. When they read this chapter, they were encouraged. But for us today, the reader today, we do not understand this. We don't understand the depth of this truth. If we try to understand, we need to look at it from the man's from a man from the man's perspective and not from God's perspective. God's perspective includes man's perspective, but it's beyond our understanding. So I need to, I need to off the focus a little bit, a tiny bit. I need to be off focus just a tiny, tiny bit, and include man's perspective, so that we may understand more. The title I want to give today to this chapter Who Walks with the Son of God and Carries His Cross. Six months before this chapter, Jesus said to his disciple at Caesarea Philippi, I will suffer like this, I will be rejected, and I will die. And then he said to his disciple, If anyone wants to follow me, deny himself, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Deny himself, take up his cross, and <coughs> who will follow the Son of uh, God and take up his cross? That's verse 21. Then they, the soldiers, compelled a certain man, Simon a Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, as he was coming out of the country and passing by, to bear his cross. Let's read this chapter. Who will go with the Son of God? In the book of Hebrews, we need to follow Christ to the outside of the camp. That's what in the book of Hebrews. The offer of uh, Hebrews to encourage the disciples to follow Christ and go out of the camp. Oh, the outside of the uh, city, sorry. And imitate Jesus and go on the way of suffering. That's the truth that the Christian community really need at the time. So Mark here, it says here, 
I divide this chapter into three paragraphs. Verse 1 to 20 is the first paragraph. Suffered and rejected. Immediately in the morning, on, mo on Friday morning, the day before Sabbath, Sabbath starts at uh, Saturday, uh, Friday evening to Saturday evening. There's Friday morning here. Immediately in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus, led him away, and delivered him to two pilots. The elders, scribes, and the whole council. council. The whole religious uh, leaders of the Jews. So Roman gave the religious uh, power back to the Jews. So uh, the Jews had their own council, led by uh, the high priests. So they had they held a concert consultation and delivered Jesus to Pilate. Jesus was a Jew. So this is about, this is the religious matter of um, the Jews. So now they, they deliver their own flesh and blood to the Romans. So Pilate judged him. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? The high priest asked Jesus, Are you the son of the Most High? And Jesus says, I am. And then here, Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Verse 2. And Jesus asked, answered and said to him, It is as you say. He admit to it. He is truly the king of Jews because he is the king of the whole earth, king of kings. But he is not a, an earthly king. He is a, a king of the a kingdom, kingdom king. Is not an earthly king reigned on earth, but he did not explain. He did not deny. He did not say, "I'm king of the kingdom of God." I'm not the king of. Do not misunderstand me. I'm not who you say I am. He did not explain. It is as you say. Just this point worth much pondering. Have you ever been misunderstood? Have you ever been accused wrongly? Have you ever been accused wrongly? In 611, you will see a lot of this, right? Not say that, you know, people accuse you wrongly here in 611. People outside 611 will say all the bad things about us. I, I, have been, I have been there. Said that I'm the leader of a cult. And say that I'm like brown nosing the Communist Party. It's the attack. Or I ignore the lives of others. will be accused wrongly.
But when Jesus was asked whether he was the uh, <coughs> the king of the Jews or a son of God, and he said, "It is as you say." <coughs> But when uh, the chief priest accused him of many things, he answered nothing. Verse three. Verse three to five. Then Pilate asked him again, saying, "Do you answer nothing? See how many things they testify against you." Verse four. And Jesus still answered nothing. The the chief priest accused him of many many things. Uh, bringing a you know leading a revolt, but Jesus answered nothing. <coughs> Brother and sister, when we face accusation, it's hard to stay quiet. But Jesus put up with all this. But about his identity, his own identity. Yes, he is the Son of God. He is the King of all mankind. He do not. He does not deny, and he does not just、uh, argue. He doesn't say that I'm not your king, the king in your mind. I'm this king. He didn't say much. No need to argue. There is no need to argue. He was rejected. Now at the feast, he was accustomed to releasing one prisoner to them, whoever, whomever they requested. Verse six. Verse eight. Then the multitude, crying aloud, began to ask him to do just as he had always done for them. Pilate want to release Jesus. He knew that Jesus was、uh, innocent. Do you want me to release to you the King of the Jews? Verse nine. He knew that the chief priest has handed him over because of envy. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd. So that he she should rather release Bar Barabbas to them. So they cry out again,、uh, "Release Barabbas! Release Barabbas!" And shout aloud, "Crucify him! Crucify him!" They cry out loud with all their might. So Pilate, wanting to gratify gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. Verse fifteen. Hand him over to the、uh, soldiers to crucify him. Je not only was Jesus rejected by the council. Under the stirring of the high priest, he was rejected by all people, all the Jews. Everyone wanted Barabbas, but not him. And they cr shouted, "Crucify him! Crucify him!" They cried out loud. They were all stirred up. They were in great motion. It's like a movement of the Jews, right? It's like a revolt of the Jews in order to crucify Jesus. So、uh, the Pilate was afraid of this scenario. He was the governor of、uh, Roman.、Uh, how can he ever have this commotion in the in the cities? That's why he agrees straight away. And hand Jesus over to them, so that this,、uh, you know, the rumor of the commotion would not be go, would not like go back to the Roman emperor. And sixteen to twenty, 
even the soldiers mock Jesus. Rejected him as uh, the king of the Jews. Are you the king of Jews? So worship him, mocked him. So he was suffering. Verse 21 to 41. So he was suffer. Then they compel a certain man, Simon a Cyrian, uh, Cyrian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, as he was coming out of the country and passing by to bear his cross. They compel this total stranger, a passerby. The soldiers had the right to do this, to catch whoever they want to bury you to bear whatever they want they they saw that Jesus was so worn out tired so if um, there was a still a distance from there to uh, Gogova Jesus was badly wounded he was being scorched He was tortured all night. They were worried that Jesus would not be able to reach the destination. That's why they compelled this stranger, a passerby, to bear the cross for Jesus. That means it's like, who will go with the Son of God, Jesus? Where, are, where were, where were God, uh, Jesus' disciples? Where were they? At the end, it was a stranger compelled by the soldiers. Why not Jesus' own disciple? Jesus said that, you know, if anyone wants to follow me, deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now is the most crucial moment. It, it, it is the God's will that Jesus will suffer. Disciples knew because Jesus told them ahead of time. But when Jesus most needed it, where were his disciples? Here, Mark recorded here that he was he left he fled naked, right? That was last chapter. So basically, now Mark was touching his heart. Where was I? Why did I run away? Why did I not help Jesus? I am the youngest. Peter was uncle, was uncle ready. I'm young. I believe he was crying, he was weeping. Why didn't I go with Jesus? None of his disciples walked with him. Even the youngest guy, Mark, did not. When Mark wrote this chapter to Christians at 70 AD, he also asked a question, who will walk with Jesus? Church is the body of Christ. Now the Roman emperor was persecuting church, persecuting Jesus. They were persecuting Jesus when they persecuted the church. But where were his disciples? 
Many people deserted him. Many people were weak. Who may arise? Everyone deserted Jesus. They left. Just like when Jesus was crucified, when he suffered, all his disciples left. But Mark understood. Because he was one of them, he left Jesus too. Now he wrote it down. This is human. But the will of God shall certainly come to pass. His disciples deserted him. Then the soldiers compel a certain man, Simon of Cyrene, and compelled him to bear his cross. And there they crucified Jesus. Verse 24, and when they crucified him, the time of crucifixion we want to see. Now it was the third hour, verse 25, when they and they crucified him. And the inscriptions of his accusation was written above the king of the Jews. So he was crucified with two robbers. Third hours that it would be nine AM. Three times the Jews pray nine o'clock, nine AM, twelve noon, and then three PM. And then you offer morning sacrifice and evening sacrifice at 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. respectively. So the third hour, 9 a.m., morning sacrifice. What a coincidence that when he was crucified at, the ninth, at 9 a.m., the time for morning sacrifice, Jesus is the Lamb of God. He is being sacrificed as morning sacrifice. So he was sacrificed. People who mocked by, mocked him, um, teased him. Jesus is the same as he was, he was, um, he was mocked, he was blasphemed, he was fooled around. He could have jumped, he could have just left the, the, the cross. He could use the power of his power, divine strength. But he was he submit to him he submit himself even to the point of cross. He emptied himself, he denied his own power. As a human body, he faced it all, all the suffering. A body of a man. It hurts a lot. It was hard to bear. But he bore it, the pain, that suffering. Why did he do that? In place of us. That's the sacrifice he gave. Verse 33, now when the six hours had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So some of those who stood by when they heard that said that, you know, he's calling Elijah. From uh, the sixth hour to uh, 12 hours. So that's the 12th noon. That's the second prayer time of a day. Darkness covered the whole earth until the ninth hour, 3 p.m. And at the ninth hour, Jesus gave himself up to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Verse 
So this uh, a line is that we uh, but for second, for second by the council, for second by elders and also scribes, and then for second by uh, all the Jews. They wanted uh, Barabbas, the robber, then and not Jesus. And then for second by Pilate, Pilate forsook justice. He knew that Jesus was sinless, but because out of fear for the multitude, he decided to crucify Jesus. And Jesus was forsook for second by the soldiers. And here, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The Son of God. Forsaken by the uh, high priest, elders, people, soldiers, Pilate, and even God Himself. This is so deep. Who will experience such a thing? <coughs> Why would it happen this way? But we can see one thing here. Jesus, the Son of God, becomes the Savior. That's the way He took. For second, for second, for second, for second. And then He died. He bore the sins of all. He, he went in place of all. The death of the way that he took. So for second, for second, for second, and then die. No one can go so deep. Jesus went to the deepest, the deepest, the most rejected, and then he died. He saved those who had been forsaken. Those who had, those who had been forsaken, he could save them. He, he went that far. But every one of us on earth, what we are going through, even the Christians at, in uh, 70 AD, so it's only that level. It's not as deep. It's not as deep. As deep. But Jesus went all the way, the bottom, rock bottom. That's why Jesus could say, can save all of us. Jesus understands them all. And they must see Jesus went all that low. We can follow Jesus. Jesus will come back from, from the dead. So this is not the end here, even the, our current situation. Even though, you know, you were killed by the wild bees at the end, for the Christians um, in uh, 70 AD, if it is the will of God, as the will of God for Jesus, Jesus sacrificed himself. then we can also offer as Jesus did. That's the encouragement Mark wrote this down for the Christians in 70 AD. So Jesus did die. He did. Verse 37. Verse 37. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. And then the centurion said, this is truly a son of God, the son of God. When Jesus died, who were around them? There were also uh, women looking on from afar. 
Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of uh, James the Less and uh, Josa, jo and then Sa Salome, who also followed him and ministered to him when he was in Galilee, and many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. Verse 40 and 41. So only some women and some women who follow Christ who will walk with Jesus, who will go with Jesus. Where were his disciples? Only few women left. Where were the disciples? They, they, they talk loudly. Where were they? Those who had witnessed signs and wonders of Jesus, where were they? Only these women left in 70 AD. Who were facing this here? In the book of Mark, so he implied that it's those, uh, those women here who walk with Jesus. They, de they love Jesus dearly, deeply. Quietly, they held fast to their faith, to their belief. Last uh, paragraph. He was buried. Verse 42. When Now when evening had come, because it was the preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath. So it's a Friday uh, during the day. Joseph of Aramathia, a prominent council member who was himself waiting for the kingdom, kingdom of God, verse 43. Who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God? Went into Pilate and asked for the body of Christ, uh, Jesus. Pilate marveled that he was already dead and summoned. So Jesus, Pilate could not believe that Jesus died. He really did believe that he, Jesus was the son of God. He should not have died from man's perspective, but he did not understand the will of God. He knew that Jesus was a good man. Jesus was true, is truly the king of the Jews. He is the son of God. He is the savior. Even the centurion, the centurion, centurion no, no, knew. He didn't believe that Jesus will die. So he was so marveled. Why would Jesus die? Son of God died? Son of God did die? So this prominent council member asked for the body of Jesus. But the thing is, Pilate marveled that he was already dead. And the key is, where were the disciples? Who are the families of Jesus? Where were they? Jesus died. And then uh, the Sabbath will come. We have to take his body down and bury him. Whose responsibility was that? Whose responsibility? Where are Jesus' brothers? Where were his, his family? Where were they? They all gone. Where were his disciples? All gone. Only one council member who was himself waiting for the king oh, waiting for the kingdom of God, coming and taking courage. He was not afraid of being attacked by the council. He can't stand anymore. So he was Jesus' disciple in secret. Secretly, he was Jesus' disciple. And then he 
And then he went and asked G, uh, Pilate for the body of Jesus. So Pilate handed him over. Who buried Jesus? Who did? Who walked with Jesus? There was one follower of Jesus, the secret follower of Jesus. When Mark wrote this, he was saying, at the time, there were some people who secretly believed in Jesus. In when, when, uh, when it's needed, they will come forth, just like Joseph of Aramaphi. Arama All the disciples deserted him. His family deserted him. No one dared. No one dared to offend uh, the elders and the scribes. They so this Joseph took courage and asked for the body of Jesus and buried Jesus. So we ask, where was the Jesus? Now he got the body. Where were the disciples? Only a few women were there watching, observed. What, is, what was the bur uh, burial of the Son of God? Only a few women were there. Where were his disciples? Who walked with Jesus? Who can continue to follow Jesus? It's really hard to follow God. When it's time to, su to suffer, when uh, during the time of hardship, it's really, really hard. I encourage many brothers and sisters on earth, uh, in Hong Kong and all over the world, It's easy to follow God in good times. But when we face persecution, it's really hard to follow. <clears throat> and many of us fail to follow God. But just like Joseph of uh, Aramath, he, you know, followed in secret. God understands, God accepts. After Jesus uh, resurrected, he talked to them. We cannot follow, we, we are weak, doesn't mean that God rejected us. We fail, doesn't mean that God fails. Our failure Is also included in God's redemption plan. God will save us to the end. Even though we fail, the power of his gospel still embraces us. Not so that we may fail. We are not saying that we should go and fail, but when we say when we fail, God still loves us. He still saves us. You're still part of God's uh, Jesus redemption plan. Amen. That's the end of the message. <laughs>